Welcome to Grace Today, a daily vlog from Grace Community Baptist Church designed to equip you and encourage you with the Word of God. Let's begin. Well, I just wanted to start today by saying uh, thank you to all of you who came out yesterday to our drive-in Resurrection Day service. Um, it was a great hit. It was incredibly encouraging. Um, the Lord was just amazingly gracious to us. I just think of uh, when this sermon started, the sun was out, there was a rainbow in the sky, the moon was actually still high in the sky, the heavens were declaring the glory. Even if there would have been no sermon preached, we would have all seen a great display of God's greatness and goodness and his majesty. And so I'm so thankful we were able to share that together. Thank you to all who came out and thank you especially for following the protocols and um, keeping the social distancing rules and all those things. Um, it's just a great blessing. And we've actually been able to interact with uh, some folks in our city government and um, just to be able to have that testimony to them that we weren't uh, being adversarial, that we weren't fighting the rules, but we were doing our best to observe them as we still came together to worship. Um, thank you guys so much. That really provided us a great opportunity to have a faithful testimony uh, to those governing our city. And so I just wanted to express my thankfulness for you, church. Um, it was a great blessing. Now, today in our episode of Grace Today, we're going to continue to look at Philippians chapter 2. And we're really going to continue to look at this paragraph that models for us humility, pointing to the example of Christ and his humility. So let's read the whole paragraph together. It's Philippians chapter 2 verses 5 through 8. Philippians 2, 5 through 8. Have this attitude in yourselves, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, although he existed in the form of God, did not regard equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the form of a bondservant and being made in the likeness of men. Being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. This is an amazing passage, and as we talked about last time, it begins by setting the standard, and it begins by giving us a command. Have this attitude in yourself. To the standard of Christ, we should pursue humility. And when we do, there's great joy because there's great unity in the church. And we talked last time about how Christ has to be that standard. Christ has to be the standard we're striving for. And today, we're going to look at verse 6 and begin to see how Christ modeled for us humility. How did Christ give us an example of humility? If he is our standard, if he's the standard that we're supposed to be striving after, what does his humility look like? And in verse 6, we see the most amazing thing, that Christ, being fully divine, laid aside his prerogatives for the good of others. Look at verse uh, 6 again. Who, that would be Jesus, who Although he existed in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. This is an amazing thing, right? It, it affirms the deity of Christ. He existed, and really it's a, a present tense participle that's translated there. Although existing as God, although he was, is, always will be fully, truly God, affirming his deity, he says, Paul says, even though he was, is, always will be, although existing God, as God, although being fully deity, he did not regard, regard equality with God something to be grasped. This is an amazing thing, friends. Our Lord, in coming to this earth, in emptying himself by taking on the form of man, willingly, freely chose to lay aside his free exercise of his divine rights and prerogatives. How amazing is that? How amazing that the omnipotent, omnipresent God would choose to lay that aside and come and take on the form of a man and have a space to be limited to. How amazing is that? He willingly laid aside the free exercise of some of his divine attributes in order to identify with us, in order to serve us, and ultimately in order to die as our propitiation, as a sacrifice for our sins. 
That's an amazing example. Jesus Christ was willing to lay aside his divine prerogatives and rights. Now, I want you to consider that in light of the command that we are to have this attitude in and of ourselves. Now, of course, we are not deity. We never will be deity. We never have been deity. We are not little mini gods. But if he who is God was able to do this, how can we say that any right, any prerogative we have is too great to give up, too great to lay aside for the good of others? That's an amazing standard for us to shoot for. If Christ could lay aside divine prerogatives, divine rights, the free exercise of his divine rights and prerogatives, surely we can as well. And listen, friends, this is very directly applicable to the times that we live in. We live in a time where for the good of others, we're having to give up certain rights and privileges, certain things that we could easily stand up, stiffen our neck, puff out our chest and say, I have a right to do this. But it is a godly thing to do. It is a Christ-like thing to do for us to consider and wisely, humbly sacrifice our rights and privileges for the good of others. That's true, of course, in society right now as we're giving up the free range of motion even just to be able to go wherever we want for the good of others. But friends, let me encourage you to also consider this in the church. When we gather, when we get together again, even now before we get together, how are you exercising this Christ-like humility? How are you giving of yourself, laying aside your rights and privileges in order to serve others in the church? That's a difficult task right now, but it's one worthy of pursuing because our example is Christ. He was willing to demand anything he wanted as sovereign creator God, as the perfect holy one. And he chose to humble himself, to come and live as a man and to die in our place. How can we honor him, glorify him by having that same attitude in ourselves? Friends, let me encourage you. Consider the ways in which you are holding on to what you consider to be your right what you consider to be your just desserts, demanding those things be met rather than holding those things with an open hand or even giving them up in order to serve others and to prefer one another and to seek the good of others. Think about that in terms of society. Think about that in terms of how you interact with your neighbors and think about that in terms of how you interact with the church. In those places where we have held on tight and held on selfishly. Let us be quick to repent. Let us be quick to seek the Lord and ask him to help us, to strengthen us, to have this attitude in ourselves, which is also in Christ Jesus, who although existing in the form of God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped. Let's pursue Christ-like humility together by laying aside our rights and privileges for the good of others. Grace community, I'm so thankful for you. I'm praying for you. I'm praying that this time and this study in Philippians will be an encouragement to us and will help us grow so that when we get to come back together like normal, not just in the parking lot, but when we get to come back together like normal, we will be a church abounding in humility, abounding in love for one another, abounding in love for the Lord. And I'm eager to see what the Lord's going to do in our church through this time. Love you, Grace Community. Have a great day. Thanks for tuning in to the Grace Today vlog. For more information on Grace Community Baptist Church in Elgin, Texas, or how you can support this ministry, check out the links in the description below. See you tomorrow.